So here we go everyone, Prey Dogs UEVR mod is finally here and I've been testing it on my own PC which has got a 3080 Ti, an i9-9900K processor, 64 gigs of RAM and some of you commented on the last video about the rig we were using at a 4090, like it was a top spec PC and to be fair, my results aren't as good as what happened at the test but damn it's still very impressive uevr is basically as hard or as easy as you want to make it for the last day or so i've basically been practicing making my own profiles and in today's video i'm going to show you some gameplay of returnal uh, i also fired up my xbox games pass and i played hot wheels atomic heart and atomic heart was actually much better performance wise than the uh, official mod but right at the beginning of the video i wanted to show you what i've learned personally i've taken a third person shooter game aliens fire team and i made it first person in uh, three doff uh, i am going to play it in six doff using a profile that's going to be imported but i just wanted to show you how easy it can be if you want to put the time in to customize these games and just to be clear uevr is a super powerful tool so here we are in aliens fire team uh, as you can see it's a third person shooter if you don't know what it is um, i can use my xbox controller to control it which to be honest throughout the processes of most of these games is really good to have an xbox or a playstation controller plugged in anyway now what i'm going to do is i'm going to select uvr have it up running and it's normally best to wait for the games to start mainly due to like shaders loading and stuff and now i'm going to click inject so this is going to be a completely blank start. Uh, there are profiles that you can download, but for this particular part of the video is I wanted to show you guys what it's like to build a profile. I'm not a perfectionist at this. I've only been doing this a day, but that's part of the reason I wanted to do it. And I might make some mistakes. I thought a really good place to start was a third person shoot them up. Now, to be clear, now I've injected this with UEVR. This looks like a very, very cool VR third person shooter, which obviously we don't get many of. Um, this actually looks really cool. I'd actually happily play it like this. So, we want to make it first person. Um, we need to click show advanced options in most things. I think the reason that box is there is for those of you who are just going to import VR pre-made configurations, which I would heavily suggest you do, uh, unless you've got lots of time. And it's really fun to mess around. Uh, you can literally just delete anything you make and then download the proper config file if you want or go back to nothing like I have now. So uh, these are the rendering methods. Uh, it depends on the game. Most of them seem to be native stereo apart from a couple of others. Now I'm going to tell the game what I want the game to basically work out as the priority form of movement. Yeah, what it's going to lock onto. And we're going to go right controller and I'm also going to enable room scale movement. So now as you can see... The controller on the other side is moving the camera uh, and then double clicking both joysticks and then we're going to go. Now, this isn't a series tutorial. This is me just showing you what I've learned and how far I've got in a, in a relatively short time. Uh, then we click on common objects and acknowledge pawn. Now, the pawn is basically the main player and we want to attach the camera right relative to our character. So here you go. You can see him here. Yeah. Um, we're basically in the guy now and we can hold the right joystick and then move the camera around. So what we want to do is get very close to his head. Look, there's his tongue and stuff. Uh, so we need, we want to still see the player mesh a little bit. And unlike first person games, third person characters tend to move around a little bit and sway. And then we're going to go to components uh, because basically I don't want to see his head uh, and to make it more immersive, nor his body. So we want to make his head invisible. Uh, his body invisible. So his body is now invisible. I think that's his head. There's his head. And we'll make that invisible as well and save it. So now all we've got here is like a, th a three doff version of the game. Nine instantly. So you can see the weapon still clipping in from my back. Uh, I, I actually think this is actually really cool. So if I just hold the camera a little bit, right? Where's his gun here? He's, he's going to move when he runs. There we go. I'm happy with that. Still got my weapon here. Now, this is basically a 3 off VR game. I've just turned this into a 3 off VR game, four minutes. And I just think, in that little space of time, <laughs> it, wows the, it wows the hell out of me, the software. The game looks fantastic. It looks like I'm playing it from a whole new perspective. Okay, so that's what I did. Okay, that's what I got up to, as you saw, in like four minutes. I think that's what the most amazing thing about this is. Uh, so now I'm going to use a pre-made uh, imported config 
Um, literally, you just download it from the list that you'll find inside the flat to vr Discord. I had to delete the one I just made because it would probably conflict. And then I just click inject. And I actually want to see how this one is different to the one I just made. Let's see what happens. It might have six off, I'm not sure. Yeah, so now... We have six off. Which is... <laughs> Which I think is absolutely crazy. I'm not quite there to making a sixth off game. I got I got to the point yesterday where I was trying to map my controller to this gun and it just wouldn't... Basically, where the gun's shooting now, I could not get it to align. The gun looked fine. I could shoot here, but the bullets were going up there. All right, so let's play this in sixth off just to, just to take a look, man. Just to take a look. I got a ping on Dr. Honecker's personal data transmitter. He's this looks hard. fantastic. First, we need a deck plan. Off a this and looks fantastic. It really does. Okay, so the gun's clipping uh, through my shoulder a little bit. What I can do is mess around with this mod, right? And just, or this config. Just bring my head up a little bit and bring it forward a little bit. So now the gun is, it's just off to the side there, but it's a little bit better. And I think that's what makes it so special is the fact you can do this stuff. You can mess around with it and you're going to learn more and more. And this is a brand new build of UEVR, like from yesterday. Um, they're adding all sorts of updates. Now, what I want to talk about in a minute as we go through some other games is how I think people need to keep their expectations in check depending on their PC spec. This, I've got an i9 uh, 9900K uh, and I've got an RTX uh, 3080 Ti. And like some of you picked up on in the last video, the last testing I did was on a 4090 and it did make a hell of a difference, especially for games like Robocop. And you need to mess around with things like NVIDIA DLSS to get some of the best looking uh, resolution and stuff and refresh rates you can get. Because these games are pretty demanding, you know, uh, some of them are pretty demanding anyway. And what happens is you can think to yourself, right, I'm going to turn down, um, I'm going to turn down certain graphics to make the games run better. But what happens is you, you lose a lot of fidelity, so you need to then up the resolution. And that's where I think the CPU maxing comes in. And that's what the, these games are when you're using UEVR. They're very CPU heavy. Like this game is known for being absolute chaos. I can only, like, I literally thought I could only imagine what it would be like in first person. And now I'm trying it. Very cool. Okay, let's move on to the next game. Okay, so, here we have Returnal, which, <laughs> in first person, looks absolutely insane. Uh, seriously, I... This is far better than I ever imagined. Like, seeing these things, just reaching out to you in VR, man, is... Oh, it's insane. This is one of my favourite games on PlayStation as well, and I've literally bought these games just for this video. I did have to mess around a lot uh, with the graphical settings to get it to what I think is kind of an acceptable um, level. Of presentation and obviously performance but yeah it you know it works so bloody well how the game's gonna actually like perform for me though in when it gets all busy it's basically what i wanted to record today and find out whoa that's crazy bro oh my god look at that i've never seen, never noticed that before never seen the lasers pick up the leaves that's insane. Oh man, look at that. That looks, that looks absolutely insane in VR. <laughs> Insa Whoa! Oh my god. I've never been scared of this thing before. He can kill me. I think he's meant to kill me. Yeah. This is the time you're meant to die. So good. Oh my god, he's inside of the ship. Let's get out of here. That's so freaky. These are the bits of the games you're not meant to see. God has arise. This is pretty much why I was so excited for it. 
Just for this game. I'm such a fan of this game. Oh man, that looks Acquired fucking... a xenotype weapon. <laughs> Come on. Whoa! Fucking insane, man. Oh, I'll have that, thank you. This is it. Oh! <laughs> that was fucking cool! Phenomenal. Returnal is amazing. Right, next up we've got Gravel, which looks absolutely gorgeous. You can use the touch controllers. Um, I'm actually using the control pad because you can't switch without obviously doing any button mapping. You can't switch cameras. But I think out of all the games I've tested so far, this game, oh by the way, it's only like £1.50 at the moment. So this is a really good app to start your uh, testing of your VR. As soon as you get to the injector, the injector picks up what game it is, and it just works. Like, and uh, this is the one I've had the least amount of problems with. And when I say problems, just, I say problems, but I don't mean that in a negative way. Just set up. You can literally just, you start plugging and play for this one. And it looks incredible. It plays so, so good. Great sense of speed. Beautiful graphics. Right. Just fired up. Xbox Games Pass. Gonna give um Gonna give Hot Wheels a go. Wow. Well this game doesn't have multiple camera angles either. Um just literally fired it up, injected. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Mate, that is awesome! That is fantastic. I have not done anything. I could make this a first-person racing game if I wanted to as well. Uh, what most people want to do is... Um, can I just move this camera to first-person? Oh my god, they've got little cockpits. <laughs> Let's put it there and see what this looks like. Whoa! <laughs> see anything oh. oh my god there's so much stuff you can mess around with that's what i mean this goes way over my head sometimes all right this is probably not gonna work it did well it kind of worked oh my god it's crazy <laughs> the car moves too much <laughs> Fucking hell. The performance is um is a lot better than the uh, Luke Ross mod. I think it was Luke Ross who made the other mod. I'm not sure. Man, DLSS is fucking savage. Oh, creepy. Oh, look how hairy his arm is. Man, that is fucking insane. You girls are a lot bigger than I remember. You should hurry. You don't have much time. Well, that's weird. What's happened? Got clouds all in my face, man. One sec. Please secure your seatbelt. That's better. The performance is fantastic. This is audio guide. Wow. We'll be arriving at our destination. Estimated time of arrival. This is a fucking hell roller coaster, man. Whew. Oh, these are stomach pushers. Whew. 